Well, this video has Adventure Bike in the thumbnail and is all about ADV riders, so no one out there is actually gonna watch it, which is a shame because ADV riders are a breed all to themselves. They don't care about going super fast, they don't care about classic looks or flashy graphics, all they want is a motorcycle that can go anywhere. Or at least that's what they tell themselves as they park their motorcycle out front of a Starbucks and run in for a $10 black coffee to go in their cup holder. Something you might not know since no one watches any of the off-road stuff on the channel is that your old Papa Yams has a bit of a soft spot for ADV bikes and goofing around in the dirt. It's a whole lot more fun than Street Rossies out there give it credit for. You can experience how your bike feels when it loses traction at lower speeds and you can practice wheelies and have grass to land on rather than asphalt which is a whole lot softer. And since you go a bit slower, if you manage to high side you won't get yeeted into the sun. More or likely you'll yeet yourself into a thorn bush because nature sucks. But there's a measurable difference between ADV riders and dual sport or dirt bike bros. You see, dirt bike bros are all about jumps and roosts, while dual sport riders want to be like their dirt bike brethren, but they must begrudgingly trundle down paved roads, and ADV riders are all about the journey to the trail. They've chosen a life of big, unwieldy, glorified naked bikes, and in doing so, created their own little cast of characters you'll encounter. So today, we're going to break down the most common ADV riders you'll meet out there in the wild blue yonder. Now, if you're even planning on dipping a toe into the ADV lifestyle, you're gonna need a way to display your maps and music and episodes of Long Way Round while you're out for a ride, and that means a handlebar mount. Wouldn't you know it, Rockform makes the best phone case and handlebar mount combo out there. Their cases drop tested from six feet, and they even sent us a test phone to abuse in all sorts of nasty ways, and I've already chucked it right at the ground, and it didn't break at all. Not that I advise you spike your phone into the ground as if you were just scored a touchdown or something like that. When you pop the phone into the handlebar mount, it's held in place solid as a Rock and hey, you think that's where they got their name from? But if you thought that Rock Form was just about phone mounts, they've got way more to offer from dashboard mounts, sport rings, belt clips, wireless chargers. If you can attach it to a phone, they've probably got it. They've even got a speaker that you can mount to a golf cart or I suppose anything else that has metal in it since it's got the same beefy magnets that the cases do. Click that link below and check out their entire range of goodies and use the code YN25 to get 25% off your order. Big shout out to Rock Form to supporting what we do. Now let's get started with perhaps the most well-known ADV rider out there, but one of the rarer ones given that you need to be willing to sacrifice a lot of money to become one, the BMW GS guy. Now this rider first got excited about ADV riding when a buddy of his showed him long way round. And ever since, that's all he wanted to do is own GS and mercilessly dunk on all other ADV riders for not buying the bike that went around the world. I bet you KTM is kicking themselves in both of their butt cheeks now. Now if you're out there thinking this sounds familiar and you have a GS in the garage, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but the only thing in common with the R1250 GS and the bikes E1 and Charlie rode are the names and the fact that both are boxer engines. BMW has slowly been turning the GS into a sport touring motorcycle left, they realize that the only people who buy GSs are older men in their throes of a midlife crisis who also happen to have a BMW M class in their driveway. The kind of person who unironically wears a BMW M Sport hat, if you know what I'm saying. Now, the GS rider is more of a highway warrior than an actual adventure rider. They pick the sandwich shop that's the farthest away and then take the most direct highway roads to get there. They don't ride the twisties or the trails because they've paid almost 30 grand for the top spec bike and they're not about to get even a single scratch on it. You'll find this rider most often out in front of the locally owned hipster coffee shops because Starbucks is so played out. Come on, I'm not going to take my GS to a Starbucks. They'll talk a big game, but when rubber meets the road, they're really just the Versus 650 rider's final form. Number two is the exact opposite of the GS rider and is a new phenomenon that I've noticed in recent months is the young ADV Squid. Now the young ADV Squid doesn't have the money to purchase a 1250 GS, but that won't stop them from buying a Tenere 700, a Triumph Tiger, or an 850 GS on that sweet, sweet dealer financed credit, then proceed to ride around wearing nothing more than athletic shorts, a t-shirt, sandals, and an adventure helmet. The thing is, they ride their ADV bikes like they're little sport bikes. They speed, they pop wheelies, they jump curbs, it's like a deeply confused DRZ boy or an alternate dimension Jixer squid. The thing that confuses me even more about these riders is that their bikes are really nice. Sure, they're not top spec models, but they have all the options from hard cases to hand warmers and fancy seats. Not to mention the bike doesn't look like it's seen a million miles, but they literally ride every day rain or shine, presumably with a second squid uniform tucked away in a dry bag somewhere underneath their bike. I'm actually genuinely curious what series of decisions has led someone down this path and why they didn't just do the standard squid thing and start out on some clapped out Jixer 750. If you're a young ADV squid watching this video, I invite you to hop into the Discord and explain yourself. Who knows, maybe you know something that I don't. 
In all honesty, it's probably a young guy riding his dad's bike, but who can say? Number three lies right between the young ADV Squid and the R1250 rider. It's the old rider on a small adventure bike. There's a few ways that this rider manifests. Either they started out on one of those cruiser boys who also happen to have a dirt bike type of thing and then trade both of them in for one bike that can do both things, or they came from sport bikes and still have a track toy in the garage but wanted something sensible and comfortable for the street. Or maybe they just wanted one because they thought it looked cool. Either way, they're out riding around on bikes like the G310GS or the KTM 390 Adventure. If you're out for a ride with one of these riders, prepare to take things very slowly because they're not out for speed because they want to take in the sights and sounds of whatever back road you're riding down. They bought every comfort mod from the catalog but stopped short of any performance mods because they don't want to cause any reliability issues. You see, they want this little mule of theirs to be the last ADV bike they buy and they're past the point of caring about exhaust sounds, but they're not so far gone as to not wear nothing but high vis. We'll talk about that guy in a minute. You might ask the old ADV rider about all this technology in his bike, but chances are he doesn't know what half of it does. And not just because he's some boomer who doesn't know how Google works, he just doesn't really care. As long as the throttle and the brakes work like a normal motorcycle, who cares if the ABS is switchable and you can sync the dash with your phone? Now, the next ADV rider up is the most hardcore ADV rider out there, and wouldn't you know it by just looking at him, it's the dual sport ADV rider. This is the person who started out as a weekend dual sport rider who goofed around on some of the local back roads and decided that he wanted to go somewhere different, but he didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on a second bike. Instead, he thought about the types of riding that he was going to do and then built his dual sport to do it. Some of the most common mods include a giant rally tank, wider, more comfortable seats, luggage rack with some jerry can adapters on it, LED lights built into the handguards just in case they get stuck out on the trails at night, and handlebar risers to help dampen some of the vibrations since they're always on a thumper. These are the kind of ADV riders who don't brag about their trips, they don't talk about the next bike they're going to buy, but if you ask them for some pictures, they will show you some of the most incredible shots you'll ever see on their motorcycles. They also know the best places to go, exactly what route you should take, and they probably have a paper map tucked away in their back pocket. You might leave them in your dust in the highway, but off-road, you have no hope of keeping up. Number five goes to the guy who so badly wants to be as cool as a dual sport ADV guy but tries just a little too hard. It's the Swiss Army ADV rider. It's like man versus wild versus survivor man. One talks a big game about surviving out in the wilderness with only one of his bikes and eating bugs and berries. The other one can actually manage to go a week in the wilderness without drinking his own pee just to prove a point. The Swiss Army ADV guy trades in his adventure bike every single year for the newest model because it has one extra feature and slightly lower curb weight and always has to bring that up. They're the spec sheet warriors of the off-road community. Not to mention they have their pannier packed to the gills with all sorts of random crap all the time, even if they're just gonna go get gas. If you're on a ride with this guy and you get a flat tire, you won't even ask if he's got a patch kit. He'll just materialize out of thin air and proclaim that the kit he's got is the best run on the market because somehow the patch is better than a brand new tire. It smacks a little of desperation because deep down the Swiss army guy knows they'll never be as cool as they think they are. But number six doesn't even care about being cool, it's the high vis Banana ADV guy. This one has a family and kids that they'll never shut up about and they're constantly bringing up how they have to ride safe so they can get back home for dinner. It's not as if spawning a mini me from your loins means you have a death wish when you ride. In fact, if I had children, I would probably just ride my bike straight into the nearest wall. He'll criticize your choice of motorcycle as being too fast or too loud or not beginner appropriate, even as if he was talking to Valentino Rossi himself, because in the mind of the high-vis banana, the only way to survive any excursion on a motorcycle, you must first don a suit of neon yellow and reflective strips brighter than a thousand suns with matching Schubert helmet and for some reason a construction worker vest on top just in case you need to blind a passing airplane. Why this guy even wants to own a motorcycle is a mystery because it certainly isn't about fun. I mean, it is entirely possible to ride a motorcycle in normal motorcycle gear and not instantly die, but the high-vis banana guy just doesn't see it. He's also on a Versus 650, but he will not graduate to the ranks of the R1250 GS rider because that's a little too much power, and unless he reminds you, he needs to get back and see his kids. But then he opens up his panniers, and what's that? His kids are right inside. He doesn't even own a minivan. He just takes them to soccer practice right there and then. The last ADV rider is the Ultimate Kyle, the darkest timeline version of the GS rider, the KTM 1290 Adventure Maniac. This rider walks Walked into a KTM dealership one weekend, was handed a Red Bull which he immediately shotgunned, a ready to race hat, and it was game over. He didn't even take a test ride. He signed the paperwork on the road on a zero mile 1290 adventure because hey, YOLO. 
This rider is absolutely fearless about unleashing 180 horsepower in the dirt. And sure, his bike has limited off-road mode, but that's for wimps. Just grip it and rip it, bro. Like his normal universe counterpart on the BMW, the 1290 Maniac is clad head-to-toe in KTM gear and sleeps in a ready-to-race bedspread, which was special ordered straight from Austria. The only difference between the two is the 1290 Maniac does all the maintenance themselves and has the whole bike covered in power parts, whereas the 1250GS rider just takes it to the dealership for that oil change. You gotta give it to the 1290 Maniac, though. They know how to have a good time. Fact! A Canadian police officer named Ward Clapham created a program that gives positive tickets to people who do good deeds. Oh, Canada. Goodbye. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yammy Noob video, but I tell you what, there's another Yammy Noob video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you, so why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.